There's a system for tracking the progress in integrated circuit manufacturing and design called the technology node. Technology nodes are numbers in units of nanometers that indicate a key dimension in the device. This picture on the left I took from Wikimedia and it had only a little bit of caption to it, so I have to surmise a little bit, but my, I'm surmising is from somewhere between 1968 and 1970. It's a seven element transistor to transistor logic gate. The smallest feature in this picture is 20 microns, which means the picture was taken with a light microscope, which is why there's color in it. And then 20 microns was the state of the art in the 60s, which is uh, why I'm sort of pegging it somewhere in the 60s. The first MOSFET was invented in 1959 by Atala and Kong, and then they made one in 1960 at Bell Labs. It had a 20 micron gate length. By 1969, Intel was commercially producing the 1101 MOS SRAM chip, which had a 12 micron gate length. And by 1971, several players were making 10 micron gate length chips. And I think that includes Intel's 4004 microprocessor. What I like about this technology node designation, it started in the 60s with the birth of integrated circuitry, which corresponds with the birth of me. My life has followed the story of integrated circuit progression from the start. So I was born somewhere between those two dates, and the first commercial release came out when I was a toddler. In 1971, when Intel produced its first uh, microprocessor, I was in kindergarten. And then in 1981, and we're down to, we, I say we, the industry is down to the one and a half micron gate lengths. By 93, it was 350 nanometers, and by 2005, it was 65 nanometers. So as I've gone through being born to kindergarten to ninth grade to grad school to finally teaching you all, it went from 20 microns to 65 nanometers, and currently the industry is at 10 nanometer gate lengths, where it's holding. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. So the technology node is given in units of nanometers and refers to really two key lengths in an IC chip. The gate length and the metal pitch, which you can think of as the separation between neighboring MOSFETs. So the technology node, which is in units of nanometers, refers to two key lengths in an integrated circuit. There's the gate lengths. And there's the metal half pitch, which you could think of as the separation between neighboring MOSFETs. Historically, those have been about the same. Until about the mid-90s, around 95 or so, the industry really just sort of decided we're going to focus on gate length. And so gate length was more aggressively reduced than the metal pitch, the, you know, the separation. To the point now that, that you know, there's somewhere around a factor of three difference between gate lengths and metal pitch. And another issue that has crept into technology node being a good description is the fact that the devices are becoming more three-dimensional. As we're moving into the use of FinFETs with the latest technology node, the three-dimensionality is allowing greater circuit density without necessarily requiring a smaller gate length. And so we have these two problems with referring to a technology node as so many nanometers. One is that we no longer uh, can say that that refers to gate length and metal half pitch. And secondly, it doesn't really refer to gate length because the gate length is not needing to shrink anymore with the introduction of FinFETs. And so there will need to be some modifications. Beginning with the 22 nanometer node, it stopped being a good description and Engineers sort of feel like it's been taken over for marketing purposes. If you have a new smartphone, it contains a microprocessor that was fabricated with the 7 nanometer technology node. And just to put that in perspective, that means it has about 100 million transistors per square millimeter. It's a lot of transistors. It was released in 2018 by TSMC a Taiwanese foundry and also the largest foundry in the world. And the author of our textbook was its chief technology officer before he went to Berkeley. And then in 2019, it was released by Samsung and Intel is presently working on it. It uses FinFETs, which we're going to have a discussion of uh, later in about a week or so. The gate lengths are around 8 to 10 nanometers. Now it's a 7 nanometer node. 
So there's an indication of the gate length not keeping up with the node number. The more interesting thing is that the 5 nanometer node, which has already been rolled out by TSMC, also has 10 nanometer gates. The 14 nanometer node had gate lengths ranging from 18 to 30 nanometers, depending on who was making it. So, you know, 10 nanometers is a significant improvement over 18 to 30, but it's still not keeping up with the node number. Also, the 7 nanometer node is the first node that was manufactured with extreme ultraviolet lithography. That is 13.5 nanometer wavelength. There is some optics involved in making structures that are smaller than the diffraction limit. I'm not really familiar with that optics, but understanding it is on my to-do list. So if technology node is no longer a good description, you know, what we're getting is not what that number says. Engineers are working on better ways of describing it. So here are two, uh, two proposals that are kind of out there. There's the GMT method. Rather than just giving you a single number, 5 nanometers, which doesn't describe the gate, doesn't describe the metal pitch, there are three numbers given, the one that describes the gate, one that describes the metal pitch, and one that describes the number of tiers. What that is, is an anticipation that in the next 10 years, we're going to start seeing multiple layers of transistors stacked on top of each other, as opposed to strictly a planar integrated circuit. And that's coming on, but in the, in the 5 nanometer node, you still just have one tier. So this is an improvement over the designation of today because it accounts for the fact that gate and metal pitch are not the same, and it prepares us for the number of tiers that are coming forward. So just to pull an example out of this article I've had you read, the 5 nanometer node can be described with a certain gate pitch, metal pitch, and number of tiers. It's going to have 48 nanometer gate pitch. It's going to have a 36 nanometer metal pitch. And it'll still have single tier. And so it'll be designated with G48, M36, and T1. So instead of saying 5 nanometer node, you might have a more of a mouthful. You'll say G48, M36, T1. But you'll also be giving the information that really describes what's on that chip. So that's the GMT method. Not currently the way technology nodes are described, but may become the, the new, new method. There's a bigger picture approach that was recently proposed by a small group of uh, industry leaders, including the author of our textbook, Calvin Hu, called the LMC method. LMC standing for the logic density, the memory density, and the interconnect density. So rather than forcing a description that includes measured dimensions that in the future may not even be relevant. It goes with what I'm calling it a big picture approach. I don't know if anybody else calls it big picture, but I'm calling it big picture. Just designate the node with the densities, the logic and the memory density, as well as the metallization density. I suspect the IRDS is going to take a very serious look at this. And so let's see what sort of designations we have in the future. My guess is that in the distant future, I don't know how distant or not too distant, we're not going to be talking about the blank nanometer node anymore, but we will be using one of these new designations. And probably they'll be backtracking on the, the listing, right? I mean, that is, if you go to wikichips.org, which I want you to do, go to wikichips.org and understand all these technology nodes. You can go back to 1970 and rename all of those technology nodes with the new method, whichever new method you wish to use, the GMT or the LMC method or some other method. So when a method is adopted, it would be perfectly reasonable to, to go back to the long history of nodes and rename them with it. So go ahead to go to wikichip.org, study those nodes, answer a few questions. What's the difference between a full node and a half node? Answer that. Make sure you understand what that means. Take a look at the progression of gate lengths. Who are the major players? Uh, who typically comes out first with a new node? What are the uh, gate pitches that you're seeing? And, and uh, what are the technologies that are employed? Because that too is listed with each node, the fabrication technologies. So answer those various questions. Don't click on every node because there are so many of them. Maybe count how many there are since 1970. Go ahead, do that. That's uh, kind of your homework to do that. Take a really close look at that Wikichips page.